My purpose is to discuss the geologic setting of primary and principal aquifers in central New York, which generally uh, occur within glacial deposits. Therefore, my comments will focus on the origin of these glacial deposits and their physical properties. And in a technical sense, we call those physical properties their sedimentation, their stratigraphy. Such details ultimately control the occurrence of groundwater, the movement of groundwater, the availability of it, and the recharge of it. Now, we're quite familiar with continental ice sheets, which exist in polar regions today, that we know existed in New York State, all of northern US, and all of Canada at several times in the past. We're also familiar with the alpine glaciers that occur in mountain, major mountain ranges of the world today. In New York State, the deposits that we are commonly dealing with when concerning ourselves with groundwater are the product of ice sheets that move through here, but the rugged topography of central New York caused these ice sheets to have a character that is more like a hybrid between continental glaciers and alpine glaciers than like either of those two end members. And it's only after recognizing the influence that the rugged terrain of New York has on glaciers that we can then appreciate the controlling factors of the deposits those glaciers leave. So I'm going to deal with uh, a subject that will help, hopefully help you understand the materials in which the water occurs. Uh, would it be possible to lower the lights because I don't think we'll be able to see these slides very well otherwise. The um, terrain of central New York is considered to be a fairly rugged terrain. We refer to that rugged terrain as having relief and the relief in central New York is something on the order of 1,000 to 1,200 feet, which means that the valleys lie deeply below the divides. And where we see uh, the landscape controlled by glacial deposits, we find that under the valley floors there are thick deposits laid down by meltwaters from the ice. These are hundreds of feet thick, sometimes three and 400 feet thick. But yet, on the valley walls, the slopes of the valleys, and on the divides, the deposits are quite different. They're non-aquifer type deposits, and they're relatively thin. The origin of these, and how they got where they are, uh, and what mechanisms and processes are responsible for their formation, uh, are indicated from clues we see in regions where glaciers are in existence today. This is the Greenland ice sheet. And the important part of this is that the ice sheet, a major continental glacier, is feeding a tongue of ice which acts like a valley glacier coming off the side of it. I think this is a key to what could have occurred in central New York. Here is a schematic diagram that depicts the landscape consisting of a deep valley between two major divides. And across this landscape is the edge of a continental ice sheet in its process of receding from the terrain something on the order of 15,000 years ago. As it receded, it poked lobes of ice down into each of these valleys, just as the continental glacier in uh, Greenland poked uh, ice down the valleys uh, that uh, lead off to the sea. These individual ice lobes uh, represent the environments in which most of the deposits accumulate that we're concerned with. We're concerned with the deposits that accumulate from meltwaters and from uh, standing bodies of water because uh, aquifers to have uh, adequate uh, physical properties to conduct water, to hold water, to yield that water have to be sorted out so that there are lots of open spaces within the deposits and those open spaces are connected with each other. These are the properties of porosity and permeability. And unless both of these occur, the water, although it may be there, will not uh, come out of the ground well. That is, we can't remove it very easily. The materials must be permeable and must also be porous. We're going to concern ourselves with the environments of glacial deposition that occur along the margin of the ice lobe. And in order to do that, we study the modern analogs in regions where ice lobes exist today. 
Uh, logically, we would call these valley glaciers. But in fact, what's happening at the margins of these valley glaciers, especially with uh, uh, glaciers in contact with lakes such as this, a glacier in southeast Alaska, uh, we can study the modern environments and thereby understand better the ancient environment of central New York. This is the Mendenhall Glacier near Juneau, Alaska. Amazingly enough, there's very little water draining off the surface of this glacier. Most of the water that's generated from the melting of the ice comes off along the edges and beneath the glacier, so that on the side of the ice, there's a tremendous discharge from major streams charged heavily with sand and gravel deposits and silt and clay deposits. These uh, sediments are carried by the meltwater out into the lake in front of the glacier. And in the process, the streams that feed into the lakes build deltas out into these bodies of water. A little bit down valley from all of these, we also find blocks and chunks of dead ice left behind, dead in the sense that they're stranded and separated from the main glacier, uh, left behind as the glacier receded. And all of these uh, blocks of ice are then buried within sand and gravel. There's some people standing up here to give you an idea of the scale of this we find exactly the same sort of deposits in central New York, and we postulate on their origin by seeing these modern analogs. Let's deal with a couple of fundamentals first. On the edge of a continental glacier, or any glacier that's actively flowing internally, the glacier acts like a conveyor belt to move its bed load and internal sedimentary load to its margin, where it then dumps that material. In the top diagram, you see the position in cross-sectional view of a glacier. And at the terminus of that glacier, by the legend, we see an accumulation of what a deposit that we call a moraine. That's a landform, a surface landform of rolling, hummocky uh, nature. I'll show you one in a little while. It's made up of sand and gravel. The meltwater that comes off the glacier flows through that, sorts some of that out, and deposits that in what we call outwash. The major aquifers of central New York, the primary and principal aquifers capable of generating anywhere from a million gallons of water a day or more on down to suit our needs, come from deposits of this type. After the ice recedes, we typically have ponded up between the moraine and the retreating ice a lake. And in that lake, fine sediments accumulate. So, in locating these deposits in the landscape and recognizing their existence at depth uh, and knowing the scheme in which they originated, we have some idea about uh, predicting where the best deposits might lie and what materials might be uh, beneath the surface.